Good morning. The business model for Western biotech and pharmaceutical companies is to let Chinese labs and researchers do the most innovative research and drug development. Then our companies sign licensing deals with Chinese companies, get those medicines approved in the United States and Europe, then mark up the price 50 times. Then they discount those drugs that will be sold in Canada or in Europe, so patients there think the Americans are getting ripped off and sick people in Canada and Western Europe feel better about paying 30 times what patients here in Asia pay. The only value add that our pharmaceutical companies offer is in the packaging and in their know-how to work the bureaucracies at the FDA or in Europe to get the made in China drugs approved there. Then the drugs go into a box with their brand name on it. It's really as simple as that. And that model is worth hundreds of billions of dollars a year. That system will work until Chinese companies can offer their treatments to patients directly. China is opening up its system as we speak here in mainland China and later on Hainan Island. And it's happening now that patients come to China directly because they can get the latest treatments available without waiting on the FDA or for European regulators to green light a drug a few years from now. Or if they don't want to wait a year to get an MRI or an appointment to see a specialist at home. The rich patients are already coming here. Wealthy patients in China have been using these Chinese medical centers for years, but soon enough they'll be joined by middle class patients who will be coming for the same reasons rich people do now. They'll also be saving money. It's cheaper to fly to China and stay in a luxury hotel, get treatment, then fly home than it is to pay our doctors and drug companies at a local hospital. And it's faster too. That is to say that as China fully opens up their hospitals, then later on Hainan to patients from around the world, the Western business model for healthcare delivery will fall apart. Until that time comes, here is the system now. This explains it best, a feature in Biopharma Dive. David Lee is the head of a startup company that was looking for a biotech partner who could do the research on a few drugs they believed would have a big market potential. Drug targets, as they're called. And he learned that Chinese biotechs were already working on them. He went to Shanghai and Suzhou. Those cities are really close, about an hour apart by car. And there are many biotech companies there, hundreds of them. It's ruthlessly competitive. They're trying just to stay alive, creating more value than the companies down the street. He figured out in a few minutes the same thing that our biggest drug companies have, that it's easier and faster and cheaper for them just to hire the Chinese to do all the work and then sign licensing deals. There's no need to talk to sick patients or spend a lot of time in labs. Just fly to Shanghai with a suitcase full of money and set up meetings with Chinese companies who are working with the patients and doing the lab work. JP Morgan, the big investment bank, hosted a big healthcare conference. Make of that what you will. And everyone there agreed that this is how the industry works now. And it's growing fast. This CEO said that our Western labs are losing their edge and it's Chinese innovation, which is driving the industry forward now. Here's an example. Keytruda is from Merck. It's an immunotherapy drug and the most profitable drug industry-wide. A Chinese company, Akiso Therapeutics, built a drug that performed better than Keytruda, and it was snapped up by another company, Summit Therapeutics. Here are the prices for Keytruda. Each dose costs either 11,795 or $23,590. That's for one dose, depending on whether the patient goes once every three weeks or once every six weeks. That treatment continues until things get worse or things get much worse or for two years is what I think this means. So I hope you have an expensive house you can sell if you're on Keytruda. But this new Chinese drug works better than Keytruda. So now Summit is going to be setting the prices on it, probably even higher than Merck does for the Keytruda. And investment analysts have a strong buy on Summit shares based on what's possible now with this Chinese drug. Annual sales in the double digit billions and the company could make a strong takeover target from other companies like Merck, ironically. 
So that's the system. Chinese biotech firms move faster with lower costs. Clinical trials can begin in under 18 months compared to several times that in the United States. China has a lot more people doing the research. China has the supply chains, so everything just costs less. Chinese firms pay just a fraction of what U.S. companies do, and they have better access to a lot more patients. Chinese companies are also very strong at Me Too Better, that is taking existing drugs that are already on the market, like Keytruda, and building more effective ones. For anything that is being done anywhere, come to China, and there are dozens of versions of it. Chinese labs are also more innovative in tackling the more difficult drugs and therapies. This is all expensive though, even in China, and so they're motivated to get licensing deals with the big Western names. And our biggest drug makers are motivated to get cheap medicines so that they can get them approved and new patent protections and price guarantees are secured in our home markets. Venture capital is moving in. Nine figures is 100 million up to a billion. And these companies are raising money to buy cheap drugs developed here in China and do the same thing Summit just did. These red lines going straight up is how much our companies are paying upfront to license Chinese made drugs, basically from zero to over $2.5 billion in a single year with a lot more coming. This piece was written by David Lee instead of about him. China's biotech sector is bearing fruit as a result of being part of China's made in 2025 plan from 10 years ago. Now the industry is thriving and China's science parks are many times bigger than Boston's or Silicon Valley's. There is a massive shift in global biotech underway and China sets a new standard of research and development. Capital will flow to China because this is where the highest productivity is. Here's the problem for China today, the second paragraph. China biotech is fast, but they are limited in their understanding of the commercial value of their drugs in the Western markets. Without access to the key opinion leaders and the treatment gap, the Chinese struggle with how to pick targets and produce molecule profiles. And I'll be honest, I don't understand that part much. I think what he's saying is that China is building super drugs and don't appreciate how valuable they are until a hedge fund shows up and gives them $100 million in exchange for licensing rights. And as a normal person, it doesn't sound like they're doing a lot of work to earn these tens of billions of dollars a year. What's more, I also don't know why they're writing this down, publishing it in the public domain so normal people can read it and learn how we're all being screwed over. Here is the one place US and European companies have a comparative advantage. They know how much they can sell the drugs for to patients and how to make all the money. Here are three ways that all works. Number one, licensed drugs or assets as they call them, then buy the licensing rights for the drug after the Chinese clinics have done all the hard work of de-risking the assets. A normal human being wouldn't use this language and instead say, making sure the medicine is safe. Anyway, strategy number two, venture capitalists can partner up with Chinese companies doing early stage work, which can be sold off to one of the giants after the treatment is proven. Here's an example where investors put in $245 million and more than quadrupled their money after GlaxoSmithKline bought them out. Big money maker number three, set up an umbrella of several Chinese companies that will do the research and patient testing here in China. And the umbrella company, Nuco, will own all the IP rights for all that research outside China. So I guess this is how our top doctors talk to each other now and what our best and brightest learn when they head off to medical school, how to think and talk like investment banks. And I agree that these are clever, trillion dollar ideas and strategies, but they are preconditioned on the idea that Chinese researchers are smart enough to develop life-saving drugs, but they're too stupid to figure out how to directly work with sick people outside China. Because when they do figure out that part, 
all these venture capitalists go away, along with all their giant profit margins. And that day is inevitable because Wall Street and venture capital, these are the only constituencies that benefits from the system that we have. The South China Morning Post has a good roundup with this lead, which is that cancer treatments literally cost 100 times more in Western markets than here. And headlines like this are routine in mainland China. It's just hard to find them translated into English. An experimental therapy to shrink cancer cells is this one. The world's first advanced clinical trials on liver cancer patients, which doubled life expectancy. A modified virus infiltrated and blew up drug-resistant liver tumors while building up immune systems. The trials were conducted on 40 patients where doctors here had given up. They had no more available treatments left, basically. Survival rates are poor. Fewer than one in five live longer than five years after diagnosis. The problem is that once the tumors become resistant to the treatments, it's just a matter of time. Here are the results. The patients in this study were able to return to immunotherapy treatment and survival rates shot up. Four patients saw their tumors shrink immediately. Overall survival times nearly doubled from nine months to 17. And the docs think that this same therapy will work on other advanced cancers. Here's another one that doesn't even sound real. Chinese researchers disguised cancer cells as foreign pig tissue, causing patients' immune systems to go crazy to get rid of them. Staggering success, they call it here, because the testing was done on patients with advanced cancers that are beyond treatment. But the tumors either stopped growing or even shrank. 20 patients in this study, all with untreatable tumors, after eight to 12 weeks of treatment, tumors stopped growing in 18 of them. One with stage four cervical cancer was cured with six more going into remission. Just my summary, but here's what this sounds like. A cancerous tumor grows because our immune system don't know that it's a problem. These researchers in China figured out how to trick the patient's immune systems into thinking it's a piece of bacon growing inside their bodies. And the immune system kicks into overdrive to kill the thing. So if you have cancer and you read about these things China is doing, what are you hoping for? That some investors from JP Morgan's healthcare conference finds one of the companies that are doing this research, pays a billion dollars for it, and gets it approved so you can pay them a million dollars in your local hospital, assuming you live that long? Or would you rather buy a plane ticket to China's Hawaii and hang out there for eight to 12 weeks and go to a Chinese hospital in Hainan once a week for an infusion and spend the rest of the time sitting on the beach. Everyone on Wall Street and all of the six-figure doctors that hand out drugs in the U.S. and in the European hospital systems, they need all of us to wait on them, then to sell everything we've got so we can give them our money. Soon we won't have to. This is Xinjiang. Be good.